You turn to your King James Bible to Proverbs chapter 22. Uh, we're going to talk today about should Christians feed lost people who didn't prepare. In plainer words, I'm not saying Christians have to be preppers. This isn't a prepper message, but I'm just simply saying people that didn't see the, the bad times ahead and they're just not at all prepared. Um, if you go back 100 years ago, pretty much everybody gardened, you know, unless they lived in the city or something, but people had a lot more sense. They didn't just, you know, refrigerate and freeze all their food and whatever. People preserved food more and what, you know, things like that. Now, today, very few people do that. So when famine comes, when hard times come, people, there's going to be a lot of people who just aren't ready for it. They didn't prepare. A lot of people who are going to run out of money, their credit cards won't work, their cell phones won't work. A lot of things like that if bad times come. And the question is, what is our responsibility as Christians to those people? What does the Bible say? Because see, most Christians out there are really just socialists. Let's just be very blunt about that. They go to their building for what? Social. That's their social circle. Um, and they, what do they do when they get there? Let's do nice things for the community. Let's have food banks and spaghetti suppers and, you know, and, you know, clothing, free clothing giveaways and go out and mow people's yards that can't mow them or whatever else. And think it's mostly just a social gospel that they're preaching. Do nice things for people, the golden rule and all the other stuff that they do. That's what most people that are quote unquote professing Christian, that's what they do. So most people, you say, should Christians feed the lost in, in times of people that weren't prepared for it? Well, absolutely. That's our job. Just wait. Um, I preached a sermon many years ago. It's an, an old audio sermon. It's not even available online that I know of. Um, and it was called Why the Social Gospel is Wrong. And I went through a lot of scriptures in that study. We're going to be going through some of them today. Not the huge, big study, but some ones that are very, that very much prove um, this whole thing of what you should do. Proverbs chapter 22, verses 3 and 4. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. It doesn't say the simple pass on and, and uh, have some bad times or something. They pass on and they are punished. Who punishes them? God. Why? Because God gives enough truth. God gives enough warning out there before he sends judgment. Remember that. God always sends warning before he sends judgment. And if people don't listen to the warnings, if they don't heed the warnings, then they get punished. Be very careful getting in God's way. Okay? There's a certain thing there where you can stand before the Lord and you see it all throughout the Old Testament. God's going to judge the nation of Israel and some prophet or King David or somebody stands up and says, Lord, please, no, don't punish them. You know, let me alone, Moses. I'm going to go down there and kill these, you know, all the children of Israel. No, Lord, please. And then Moses ends up going down and getting the, the sons of Levi, you know, the Levites, and they go and they kill a bunch of the Israel you know, Israelites, certainly, but they didn't kill them all. See, the whole thing is there's times when you can stand between God and his punishment coming, but there's other times that you should just step back and say, okay, Lord, they deserve what's coming. And quite frankly, they need to be punished. And see, that's one of the big problems with the social gospel. I mean, the church buildings in this town here, you see the signs out, remember, always remember, Jesus loves you no matter what. Huh? So he loves you when he says, depart from me, ye cursed, an everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. That's love. That's a weird Jesus. Um, oh, my peace I give you. My peace I give unto you. You know, another church building sign in the area here. Um, peace from God. You know, only peace goes to the saved. We have peace that which passeth understanding. The lost world, uh, they don't have peace. There's no peace to the wicked, saith my God. They don't have any peace. But the socialist church buildings, they want to offer those things. Oh, we have all these great precious promises in the Bible and they work for us as Christians and they work for you too, friend. No, they don't. The simple pass on and are punished. God punishes them. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Humility and fear of the Lord bring riches, honor, and life. 
You want to live through some bad times that are coming? Okay. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and fear God. And you know how the whole thing works. I've said this plenty of times over the years, but I'll say it one more time because it bears repeating. If you fear God, you don't fear man. If you fear man, you don't fear God. Very simple. Next, let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. I mean, if you, if you can look at this world right now and think, I think things are getting better. <laughs> you know, <laughs> food factories, processing factories burning down and chickens and turkeys, you know, uh, they're, they're saying this avian flu thing and whatever, and they're slaughtering them into the tens of millions. And I think that sounds good. That, that sounds like it's pretty good. And diesel is really expensive now. And a lot of truckers are having, you know, they're being stranded. They can't even finish their deliveries and whatever because they run out of diesel fuel. And the cost of gas is at an all time high and nothing to see here. No problem here. Well, then you're simple, simple minded. You're not prudent. You see, there's some things that you should be hiding right now. As if, as if you're prudent, say it that way, hide some food, hide some money. That's what you should do. But if you're a simpleton, a simple-minded fool, then uh, they're going to pass on and they will be punished for it by God. And don't forget that. And there are some cases where people will get into bad situations and they weren't simple. They were prudent. We'll talk about that as we continue. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 through 13. Now we command you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, command, not suggest, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us. Um, I've talked for many years now how to live very poor. Why? Because I knew rough times were coming. I preached a sermon years ago. I think it was back in 2010 or something, 2010, 2011, somewhere in there. Called, and it was called, Could Times Get Rough Before the Rapture? So I've been doing this thing longer than I was even married. Um, I've been preaching, hey, rough times are coming. And that's been a gift that the Lord has given us that we have we know how to live very cheap. It always cracks me up. People say, oh, you know, we can't live on just one income. We do. Um, there are ways to do it. There are ways that a wife can save money by not going out and spending money, you know, on things. Well, she has to have a job. Well, does she really? Does, yet, does she have a car to get to that job? Well, there's an extra vehicle payment. There's an extra insurance and all the maintenance and everything else. There's a lot of other things that you can, you know, cut out the car, cut out the job. You don't need that. Don't go out to eat. There's make food at home, learn how to fix clothing and things like that, sewing and knitting. And there's a lot of things that you can do to save money, to save a lot of money. We've tried to live by example. That's what I'm supposed to do as a preacher. Verse 10, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you, again, another commandment, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Uh, yes, hello? Oh, hey, buddy, you know, how you doing? Um, I, I just, we ran out of food, you know, and, and I really need some food. Do you, you have any extra food around? What should be our response? Oh, sure. Oh, you poor thing. You. Oh, let me just give you a whole box full of food. You didn't prepare? You were the guy that was going and had a nice truck and toys and whatever else and big flat screen TVs and, you know, got the stimulus check and blew it all on a bunch of junk and everything else and just lived high on the hog and now you lost everything because the stock market collapsed or there's, you know, the f store shelves are bare. And I would, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Here's food. I'm a nice Christian. I want to give people food for free, even though that they don't deserve it. No, if any would not work, neither should he eat. And by the way, in context, it's talking about saved brethren. It's not talking at all about the lost world. 
We'll see that more as we continue. Should you help out the lost people that haven't prepared? Um, very questionable. Extremely questionable. Verse 11. For we hear that there are some which walk among you, the saved brethren, in other words, disorderly, working not at all but our busybodies. They're just going around talking. That's all that they're doing. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, a commandment here. That with quietness they work and eat their own bread. I forget how the exact saying goes, but something like you give a man a loaf of bread and you just make him dependent. You teach a man how to make a loaf of bread and you make him independent. There's a lot of truth to that. You know, some guy comes along and says, hey, you know, I need some food and whatever else. Oh, here's a, you know, here, here's a biscuit. Take a little bit of that, you know, some sourdough off of there or whatever else you can make more. There you go. Here's some seeds. Go grow a garden. <laughs> you know. Hey, here's, oh, you need some, something to eat? Okay. Here's some wheat berries. Go find a way to grind them up and make bread. Well, no, you're supposed to just give me money and give me food and everything. You know, just give me canned goods and whatever else. No, no. You, if you don't work, you're not supposed to eat according to the Bible. And again, remember, this is to save brethren. Save brethren. The lost heathen that come around and whatever else, and oh, we need help, we need help. What do you do? Did you prepare? Were you aware of what was coming? I guarantee you there's a lot of people around here that uh, I know how they live. I see what they do. Go to the grocery stores around here, go to the grocery stores all around this area. You see it too. You see the people, they got a grocery cart full of junk food. What happens when they come to your door? I can't get my poison pop, dude. I can't get my Doritos and my other junk food and Twizzlers and oh, what do I do? Do you have any food? Verse 13, but ye brethren, be not weary in well doing. We should be doing some things, be, you know, doing well, well doing. In other words, we should be doing some of that stuff and working hard and whatever else. And I'll tell you what, it's a great thing to make your own bread, by the way. Uh, my wife can make bread and everything. She's excellent at it. And it's far better than the junk you get in the store and, and things. You know what's actually going into it and you can control the amount of sugar or whatever else if you want to put any of that in. Um, making your own bread is a great thing. Um, give us, give us this day our daily bread. You know, the Bible talks about, uh, bread is something that can be very good for you if you make it correctly. You know, watch out for a lot of this wheat, anti-wheat stuff, gluten, you know, and all this stuff. You have to watch out for some of that. I realize that the modern wheat bread that they sell in the store is toxic. I get it. Same thing as people go off on raw milk. Oh, raw milk's, milk's actually bad for you. You should have a vegan diet. Well, that's nonsense. If you get raw, grass-fed milk, it's off the charts good for you. But they say, well, we have studies that milk is bad. Y yes, okay, and the, what is the milk? It's the factory farm, pasteurized, homogenized, all that junk. Same kind of a thing. And, of course, you know, you can always point out to the, the vegan types and whatever else that uh, there's a lot of vegetables out there that are completely toxic, and fruits as well. The GMO stuff and whatever, and even the quote-unquote organic stuff, they're still using really bad fertilizers on it and everything else. So um, if you can make your own, grow your own, make your own, raise your own, shoot your own, <laughs> catch your own type of foods, um, you'll do well. All right. Um, hey, you know, some guy comes along, I, I, we need food, we're really hungry. Well, I'll tell you what, here's uh, some fishing line and a hook. Go dig some worms. Get yourself a little stick or something like that. You can fish, you know, with a, you don't have to have a rod and reel. You can actually fish from the bank and go catch some uh, bluegills or some sunfish or something like that. Some little small fish right along the bank of a lake or whatever else. There's your food. That's what the Bible says to do. Oh, you want to come in and have something to eat? Okay. Go out there and mow my yard and I'll give you some food. Is that what these uh, socialist church buildings do? 
hey, who wants to come in and help work at the church here? They're always needing, you know, grounds work done and, you know, have to redo the carpet and all the. Who's going to clean the church this week? How about you get a bunch of homeless people to come and clean it? Hey, anybody wants to work or anybody wants to eat, excuse me? Come on here and, in here and work. Go scrub the toilet and we'll give you a piece of bread. Oh, 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 you know. Well, that's what the Bible says to do. You know, to save brethren, too. Very interesting. James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verse 15 through 16. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Now this is written to a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. Twelve tribes that are scattered abroad. Read uh, chapter 1 on that. But the whole point is, it's saying a brother or sister be naked and, and destitute of daily food. They need food. They don't have any clothes to wear or whatever else. They had a bad situation. And the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble will certainly be in some really bad situations. And you say, hey, but let me let me kneel down and pray for you. Oh, God, please help brother so-and-so here. Please help him to be able to go out and get some good food and, and whatever else. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, it was, it was nice meeting you. It was good talking to you. I have to go back in. Supper's about ready. Brother or sister, in that time period, they can't just you can't just say, "Hey, go get a job." Just go, go. There's a they're hiring down the road there. Go get a job and whatever else. You can't do that. There will be no working in things for employers at that point in time. So what do you do? Feed them, clothe them, in that time frame. But where's that at in the Pauline epistles? It's not there. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. You have to be really careful about that. Next, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going to give you some of my opinions. I mean, the Bible does not openly say you cannot feed um, lost people or help lost people or something. It's, you know, you're not allowed to do that. The Bible doesn't come right out and say that. But you have to be wise about the situation. What would happen if this happens or whatever. Different things occur. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Did you see it? Verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Why would you feed the poor? Is it because there's self-sacrificial love there for them? Which is a way, another way that you could say charity. Charity is the, the correct word. It's self-sacrifice. Love can be very greedy at times. Um, you know, but charity is something that means it costs you something. So charity is the right word. Don't ever fall for that new version thing that it should be love or whatever else. No, it should be charity. But the whole point is, if you bestow, though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor... Everything that you have here, let, just uh, oh, you, you're poor. Here, let me give you a Bible. And, and somebody needed one of these swords here. Yeah, okay, there. Um, oh, hey, let me get my wallet out here. There's my wallet. Um, oh, you need a watch. Okay, here's my watch. I, you know, and oh, you know, oh, keys. Okay, yeah, you, you need a vehicle. Okay, there's you know, vehicle there. And if you're doing it out of some kind of a selfish thing or selfish reason or pride or whatever else, then it doesn't profit anything. That's what's going on there. You say, but it said feed the poor. So we're supposed to feed the poor. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. But you have to be careful. You have to be very careful. I remember years and years ago, I heard a woman, she was a psychiatrist, and she was interviewed, and she said she did a big study on the thing of the Great Depression. And they, there were psychiatrists, I guess, back then that did a, a you know case studies and whatever. And they said when people were in the food lines, you know, you see these pictures of people on the food lines, 
you know, they're standing there like this and, you know, they're dressed up very well and whatever. And they said at first, you know, they came up to get a bowl of soup and some bread or whatever the, the people were giving, the charities were giving back then in the 1920s. And, you know, and it was kind of, they had their head down and, you know, do you want some soup? Well, yeah, I'm sorry. I just lost. And he would try to explain things and just having really a hard time right now. And, and they came back the next time. Oh, you need some soup? Oh, yes, please. Thank you. Come back the next time. How long is this going to take? Is my soup going to be ready next time? And their attitude changed. The more food they were given, the worse they got. And I'm going to tell you right now, with the kind of judgment that God's going to hit this nation with, you better be very careful who you give food to. Because you give food to the wrong person, they're coming back. It isn't going to be, thank you, I really appreciate this, and they go on about their way. They'll be coming back, maybe in the middle of the night, right? Um, somebody comes and they're kicking in your door. I'm hungry, I need to eat and everything else. Well, it's not a good thing. Um, they're supposed to be punished, according to the Word of God. The simple pass on and are punished. God's giving people warnings right now. Anybody can come to this channel and watch my video I did about a famine coming. You can go and you can research it. I mean, the President of the United States, Sleepy Joe there, you know, he, he comes out and he says, will there be food shortages? Yes, there will be food insecurity and food shortages and it will be very bad and things. The president said it. Over there in China, people screaming and stuff in Shanghai and screaming and, you know, that they have no food. But then the truth came out that uh, the government had actually warned the people. And I realized that the government of China is, you know, satanic and corrupt. I get it. They do a lot of bad things. But the whole point is those people were warned. The American people are being warned right now. If they don't take heed to the warnings, it's not really our fault. So... My answer to this whole thing is, um, it depends. I can't give you a, this is the way it has to be. I don't know. Some single guy and he comes and he's, you know, I mean, always watch out. A criminal will do this, the, the criminal look, so to speak. They'll look back and forth as they're coming, trying to see if there's any witnesses. Anybody watching? As they're coming in to do something, you see somebody guy with shifty eyes doing that, you know, uh, be very careful. Um, again, some single guy or something like that. Hey, there's some places that you can go get food. Sorry, can't help you. I'm sorry, we're struggling with, as well. Don't have enough food. Sorry. I mean, again, you give it to some bad guy, you just took food away from your own mouth or your children's mouth. That's a problem. You shouldn't be giving the bad guy, you're keeping him around longer and you're keeping him from being punished of the Lord. What do you do if it's a family though? You have to pray about that type of thing. Well, here's a guy and his wife and their children, little children there, and they're hungry. You say, well, the guy's still a scumbucket. Well, he might be. Maybe he went out and he blew all of his money and everything else and daddy had to have a big screen TV and whatever else. Now they don't have any money and they're, what are we doing, daddy? We're going to starve, daddy. Well... They might need to go through some pretty bad times. I mean, the simple being punished in the Bible, don't ever tell me that no children were injured in that or hurt in that. There was a lot of times God judged nations and children perished as a result. God's judgment is coming to this country and to all the other countries out there too. Um, what happens if you see a brother or sister? Um, unfortunately, there's lazy brethren out there. Bible warns about it, okay? Those lazy brethren, sometimes, um, they're not really worth helping, quite frankly. If any would not work, neither should he eat. Uh, if a brother or sister came to me and said, hey, we need some food, you know, Brother Brian, we're saved, we're born again, you know, leave the King James Bible, went through the whole thing and, and whatever else, okay, um, I would say, well, I can give you something, can't give you the food that we're eating, you know, I can, I have some whatever type of food and, and things. If you're willing to do some work, I can put you to work around here and then we'll see if they're really saved because a really saved brother or sister will say, well, yeah, okay, we'll do that. Um, please, we'll do our very best for you.
But if they're not saved, well, you know, we're really hungry. We need it right now. Well, the Bible says, well, yeah, well, I know, but you're misinterpreting. That depends on how you look at it. And, uh, uh, you know, um, but what happens if you would see a brother and sister that did prepare and that had things ready and some thieves came and stole it? Well, then certainly help that brother and sister. There's no question about that. If the Lord allowed that to happen to them or something, then there's a reason he wants you to help them or whatever else. So don't just totally be no way not helping anybody for any reason when things fall apart. Be open to what the Lord leads in. But I would say, you know, about 99% of the people out there in this world, I would not give them a dime if things really get bad, to be quite frank. I do not want to fall into the social gospel type of a thing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Turn there yet. There's an awful lot of people out there and they think that Christians are a bunch of spineless, weak cowards and uh, easy to take advantage of. And um, you have to remember that. And they'll come and they'll, oh, I'll put on the good thing. Yeah, I am interested in your magazine. I believe in God. I believe in the Bible. And, you know, and the longer you're around them, you start to hear the profanity slip out and you start to, they start saying some things and whatever because they see that they're, you're very nice and you're not being, you're not judging them. I've seen that thing so many times. You have to be firm with people. And somebody comes along, you just say, hey, sorry, I can't help you. Sorry. Oh, my buddy, hey, man, you know, I'm really in desperate straits here. What am I supposed to do? You're a Christian, aren't you? I'm a Christian too. Sorry, I can't help you. The Holy Spirit is going to have to guide you at that point in time. Again, I can't, you know, don't email me and, Brother Brian, there's somebody at the door. What do I do? Uh, no, it's between you and the Lord and that person. You have to figure that out. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Don't fall asleep. Don't think, you know, spiritually speaking, you could sleep at night, although that might go away at some point. But I'm not laughing because it's funny. It's just this world is just so insane anymore. It's just, it's crazy. But don't fall asleep in the sense of being cognizant of your surroundings and what's going on around you. Violence is increasing at an alarming rate, just going crazy a lot of these areas, especially if you're in the city. Um, people are getting desperate. I can see it. Uh, when I'm around different people and I go to stores and whatever else, I can see that there are people that are in desperate straits. And it hasn't even gotten that bad yet. So don't sleep in the sense of, oh, da, 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 everything's fine, the world's okay, everything's okay. Be very careful. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. We're supposed to watch. You should be gathering intelligence on your whole area, is what you should be doing. And you should be looking at the people and seeing how they live. Are these people trying to prepare for hard times? They're not. Okay? Make a mental record of that. So if that guy comes to my house and says, hey, buddy, I need some help. Yeah, well, didn't, weren't you the guy that used to do this and do, used to do that? Hey, uh, I noticed you didn't do a whole lot of work over there and whatever else. I don't want you around here. I mean, if you keep feeding the bad guys, they're eventually just going to come and take what you have. Let God punish them and get them out of the area. Watch and be sober, brethren. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. A lot of people out there that are totally asleep to what's coming, and they, they like to get drunk, quite frankly. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. And I believe in context here, it's not the hope of salvation in the sense of, well, I hope that I go to heaven someday. No, no. This hope of salvation is hope that God will save us for, you know, our, our lives down here. The salvation of our lives. You know, um, Paul writes to Timothy at one point, and he says, In doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. He's not saying you have to do things to be saved. He's just simply talking about earthly salvation in the sense of, I got saved, I'm born again, going to heaven, my eternal destination is fixed, praise the Lord. 
But now I have to start working on sanctification. I can't go and do a bunch of bad things and end up messing up my life. That's what it's talking about here. You know, the hope of salvation. Oh man, what's, what all is coming on this country right now? What all is coming in, and the bad things that are happening and the energy rationing and the food disappearing and the, all this different stuff, possibility of war and everything else. What's your hope? What hope do we have? I have hope of salvation in Jesus Christ. I hope that he'll take me through this thing. I might die. Let's just face it. I might die in this. There's a lot of people that would like me to die, like to kill me. Um, okay. The Lord might say, hey, it's your time. I want you to come home now. Something happens to me and I'm gone. Something could happen to you. It could be your time coming up. Things could get very bad and you could die. Are you ready to die? If you're saved, you should be able to answer yes to that. You say, what do we do? I'll have a hope of salvation. Let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. That's what we're supposed to do. So, um, just wanted to put together this little message here and uh, share your thoughts in the comments section down below. Of course, this is being done as a premiere, so the live comments and, and things there, you can write back and forth. What are you thinking? What are your thoughts? Um, did I miss any scriptures? I mean, I'm, there's a lot we could have gone to, but I'm saying, uh, what are your thoughts in terms of helping people? Well, if this would happen, then I would help somebody. If this happens, I'm not helping them or whatever else. Um, you know, one question that I would have about the whole thing is, uh, back during the Great Depression, there were people out in the countryside that didn't even know that there was a stock market crash because they were just producing all their own food, essentially, and, and they were able to make it just fine. Well, they're, you know, this time around, we're more connected and whatever else and deliveries and more dependent on the electrical grid and whatever else, the, the vast majority of people. And so I'm wondering, is it, I think it's probably going to be a lot worse this time. Um, that's another study I've thought about doing at different times and I don't know if I'll ever get around to doing it, but you know, the, this depression that we're entering is not going to be like the first great depression. Okay. The first great depression, there's a lot of things that they didn't even have back then that we do now as far as corruption and people being mentally ill and whatever else, um, it's going to be a lot worse. So, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but just to pray about it. Let's keep the hope of salvation there. But stick by your Bible, brethren. You are under no obligation to help lost people. I don't see any scripture for that. Okay, feeding the poor... Okay, might be something there, but as far as a direct command, um, it's actually the opposite. If any would not work, neither should he eat. For a New Testament Christian. So I'm talking about saved brethren. Lost people come to your house. Uh, hey, we need some food, buddy. Um, depending on the lost person, depending on their situation, but most of them run along. Sorry, can't help you. Maybe get into a conversation. Are they open to the gospel? Really and truly open to the gospel? Be careful about that. I've seen a lot of these wicked lost people. They'll tell you what you want to hear so that they can get money or get whatever else. You have to be really careful. Um, again, the schemes in this time, this financial you know, depression that's coming, the scheming and whatever else, people trying to make money and steal money and things, it's just going to be off the charts. Stuff I'm already hearing about, people trying to make money by stealing this and forging that and coming up with some really creative ways to rob you of your money. Um, the best thing to do is just be sober and watch and uh, tell these people no. Quite frankly, they need to be punished. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, we will see you in the next video. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. 
King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.